We've got a big meeting, uh, it's called a Leaders Summit tomorrow. Um, it's kind of a secret meeting that m most of the polluters in the region are inv invited to. And myself, um, Kevin Hackwell and, uh, from Forest and Bird, and um, Christina Patton from Weka are also invited, but we'll be massively outnumbered and I'm sure we'll be muscled out of the proceedings. But one of the first things that happens before we can improve this river is we have to have some kind of truth and re reconciliation where the polluters admit to the fact that they're having a mess, making a mess. The environmental protectors, supposedly Horizons, admit that they're not doing their job and then we can start progressing forward. Um, so that, um, the, um, the, the state of the river, the science behind it is the thing that's being covered up and it's happening in the one plan hearings at the moment. And there's another huge part of this problem that's, that's not um, really being discussed and not being measured and that's the physical changes. So people are talking about the water quality and that's just the water in the river. The other big component for the life in the river is the habitat. And, and the habitat is being destroyed by the amount of sediment that comes down this river. I, I, residents of Manawatu are so used to seeing that brown river, I think they forget what's actually going on. When that river's that brown, that's our life, that's the, the soil that, that we depend on to live on being washed out to sea, and it has huge impacts on the river. Plus the fact that it's stop bank from the gorge basically to the sea, and that the bed of the river is now so high that the tributary rivers have to, be flow, have to be pumped into that river. And that sediment is just destroying all the habitat where the fish and where the invertebrates would live in the river. So, and, and very little, it's not being measured, it's not being accounted for in any way. Um, there's a whole lot of reasons for, for why it's like this and, and uh, you know, it's, it's very complex and it's trying to, to change things that is proving so hard, it's a, it's a battle against um, the values of people that think that money is, or that the economy is more important for the, than the environment, but the, but the problem with that is that the, the economy can't survive without the environment. It's such a short-term view. So we have all these problems with um, the consent process, and, and, and I really would urge anyone who wants to do something about the river to try and get involved in the resource consent process, because it's so one-sided at the moment. Uh, the, these uh, consent hearings are just unbelievable how, when, when you go into a room and you see all the money, there's always money in, in, in destroying the river. There's never any kind of um, money in trying to protect it. And, and the, the, the imbalance of what happens in these hearings is, is frightening. Um, and, and when we, the message that we keep hearing from um, district and, and councils and, and Horizons Regional Council is that the community can't afford to um, fix the problem. And I, and I get so angry when I hear that because Manawatu District Council has been polluting the Arua River which flows into the Manawatu River for 20, well for a long time, but since 20 years since the Resource Management Act's been in, they've never once complied with their resource consent conditions to discharge into that river. They say they can't afford to, to do anything about it. And then earlier last year, they announced they're spending $6 million on an aquatic centre and an artificial beach. Uh, that's, so it's not that they don't have the money, it's just what they spend the money on. Obviously, you build an aquatic centre, you get voted in. You fix up the polluted river that no one knows about and you don't get any kudos for it. So public awareness is the key to getting those kind of things changed. Um, what I, I kind of... I've, I could go on forever about it, but I'm not going to. I'm going to save some of my ammunition to, to give them uh, hell tomorrow in that meeting. But I just thought I'd just finish with some quotes. Um, Malcolm talked about 1890 when they first started discharging raw sewage into the river, and, and now it's treated. But just stop and think about what treated means. You know, just taking the lumps out is treating it. It's not like it's a lot better now. And um, in the case of Manawatu District Council, it's not much better than just pumping raw sewage in. If you ever want to go and see how bad it is, go to the end of Bones Road, um, on the road between um, Building and Awahuri, and uh, go and see the raw sewage. It stinks, and it's, um, it's got foam on it, and it's about one in 10 one-tenth of the flow of the Arua River at low flow of sewage coming out of the Manawatu district, um, out of fielding sewage. But I'll just, I've got a couple of quotes here from 
just to show that we haven't come far, but that people were concerned even back then, and how, <coughs> I guess this is proof that um, nothing much has changed except that maybe the, the writing was a bit more eloquent in those days, but that we really need to do something. This is from um, the Manawatu Herald, a April 15th, 1890. It goes without contradiction that those who have come after us will be duly grateful if, by timely protest, we save the river to then fit for all such purposes Providence directed it to supply, which certainly was not for a common and noxious sewer. And then, 10 years later in 1900, nature provided a fair, unsullied stream of water for the use of man and beast, and to foul this gift is but an evidence of how low down men get in the appreciation of nature, when from selfish ends they become so huddled together, they become an abomination to themselves. So we're 120 years later and we're still saying the same things. It's time, you know, it really is time for change. Um, thanks very much.